you very much. Uh, my name's Fiona. I'm from uh, an idyllic little urban centre in the east of England called Luton. And for the many and varied misdeeds of my youth as penance, I'm a member of the Labour Party. Fair dues, fair dues. Uh, how do we make politics less evil and boring? Uh, I can tell you that in 10 minutes you will comprehensively know, uh, so don't worry at all. It turns out that the great philosophical thinkers of our day, Marx, Freud, Foucault, Nietzsche, I've not read any of them, uh, but I know people who have, uh, they've been proved right when they told us uh, that we should view the world, its institutions, and the humanity that builds them with suspicion. We should have, as the smart people say, a hermeneutic of suspicion. Our myth of linear progress, that we can build a better world, I'm afraid to tell you, has been thoroughly deconstructed. Our great institutions, government, church, the media, the police, banking, capitalism itself, are riven with human folly, incompetence, and abuse. It turns out the stuff we build is downright oppressive. And politics in the Palace of Westminster, in town halls and parish councils across the country is worse than all of the others. What could be worse than being evil? Dear listeners, being boring. So for the average Joe, or if you like to be a little egocentric, the average Fiona, who likes a bit of leisure time, frequenting all of the many fried chicken shops in Luton Town Centre, watching reruns of Murder, She Wrote on UK Gold, there's an excuse to do those things that I dearly love and not do politics. It's evil. What's more, it's boring. But after a while... The Christian niggle sets in. It's the thing, you know, that goes on your heart. The thing on my heart, the Christian niggle. It's the niggle of Genesis 1, where God invites humanity to take care of the earth. It's the niggle of Colossians 1, where it's revealed that all things are in Christ and nothing, not even politics, which is evil and boring, can be written off. Darn it, that Christian niggle. What's more, I've frequented all the chicken shops twice round and I know the workings of Angela Lansbury's mind better than my own. <laughs> I am bored of my leisure time, what should I do? So I am left with the question. How can I engage in this murky world of politics, human power relations, uh, I feel a bit sick, and it's not just all those lemon and cheese sugar pancakes. It's probably going to make me murkier just by me being in it. And worse, I'm probably going to make it murkier with all my unintended consequences and the bad things I do. Because, of course, just like the people who are in politics already, I know, and you don't, which is why you clapped me. But I am, of course, am a little bit evil and a little bit boring. Don't comment. <laughs> but here's the thing. I think, perhaps, the fact that we've deconstructed our linear narrative of progress is actually really helpful. It might even be hopeful. Perhaps, finally, we have a clearer picture of what's really going on. Politics is evil and boring. Yes, it is. I see to you. And so am I. I really am. But I am also good and interesting and sometimes, after an odd gin and tonic, even fun. <laughs> and God says to us, for that little bit of interesting and that little bit of fun and that little bit of goodness, the evil and the boring is, is worth it. For you, Fiona Mary Esther Green, Irish Catholic, you get four names, that's how it works. Uh, <laughs> if you are worth it, then politics, then the exercise of human power is also worth it. I am glad that we've deconstructed the idea of progress, the silly idea that we are saving the world, because it is not biblical. Who is saving the world? God is saving the world. And what God holds together is a threefold reality that Walter Wink, a much much cleverer man than me, describes thus. 
Politics is good, politics is fallen, and politics is being redeemed. And those things are happening all at once, at the very same time. And what Walter Wink says is that this tension between the timeless and the temporal, that just means like in time if you're not a big reader, it's that that enables us to see that each successive sincerity, each new utopian solution or structural arrangement with a dispassionate realism, what is that? This isn't the answer. It is evil and it is good and there is hope. And suddenly, it's going on at once, those three things. And in this conceptualization, I realize that I am not saving politics but it is saving me. Because how cosy I was, my fried chicken, my UK gold, my little ideas, how pharisaical, looking on in judgment from my, safe, my sofa of salvation. But now, I'm in the Labour Party. I'm the membership secretary for Luton South CLP. Now, dear listeners, I am compromised by the unintended consequences of my actions, by my prejudices, by my lust for power, by my egomania, and the big splinter in my enemy's eye that blocks out the log in my own. What better place to be saved from than politics itself, to stumble on the stumbling block of Jesus Christ, who makes all things new. To conclude, two quotes from the masters, the senseis. The first, the wonderful, under-celebrated Walter Wink, who is brilliant and bonkers. The fall does not mean that everything we do is tainted with evil, vain or hopeless, but it does mean that it is ambiguous, tainted with egocentricity, subject to dereliction of its divine good and capable of being co-opted towards other ends. All that distinguishes Christians is the confidence that we have been reconciled with God in the midst of a fallen world. And quote two from the true master, the true sensei, woman cannot live on fried chicken alone. That's it.